Okay, finally we made it. A little bit late, a few seconds, I'm sorry about that. But welcome to this um, periscope. It's um, actually my third periscope, but the, the first main one that I'm running. So I'm also learning the platform with you. And um, uh, this one is really about answering questions on public speaking. Why? Well, main reason, because public speaking is my passion and also my job. I do um, training, class training, coaching and e-learning on public speaking. Recently, I ran um, a survey on a selection of, um, of VIP customers, if you want, and I gave them a chance to ask me a question, any question really on public speaking. And right now I'm trying to answer the most common questions I collected during this survey. Now I have three here in front of me. Uh, we'll see if we have time for all of them. But in the meantime, I'm also very happy to pick up questions you may have. And if you are watching this live on, on Periscope, it's quite easy. Just put it in, in the chat line, you know, type your questions. And if I can, I'll be happy to answer it. If, of course, if it's recorded, then I'm sorry, it's a bit too late. So um, I would say we can start. Um, I got uh, several answers to my survey. Uh, some of them were interesting questions. Some were quite common questions. Uh, the point is that no matter how specific or common, they all go back about few foundations, which people, when they do public speaking, they normally uh, face the same challenges, which are, of course, being effective, which means convincing the audience of something. You know, it could be persuasions, it could be motivate them to action, it could be anything like that, or just inform them about the subject, but just and make sure that the message came across to the audience. This is, of course, um, one of the main points, and this should be the main point of every public speaking opportunity. Um, I had a lot on tension. Still, even today, lots of people are nervous about public speaking. And I got questions on more, a bit more technical, like visual aids, software pre presentation, uh, use of text and images, and, uh, and so on. Um, so what I really come up um, with is I selected three questions for this periscope and then I'm going to um, add other periscope in the future with more questions. The first one I want to start with is really how to write a presentation to be effective both on screen and printed or you know used later online and I think the question here is really how to design how to create visual aids that will work at the same time for the screen while you're live at the presentation so they're supporting your talk and they will also be good later on when you send them to the audience or you make them available for download after your speech conference or whatever it is or again, you, you share them on a SlideShare or any other social platform, or you put them on your website. Anyway, you give people who are not at the presentation, you give them a chance to go through your slides. So how to write slides, visual aids, that work very well in both um, occasions? And the answer is very easy. There is no way to do it. Absolutely no way. Um, what, what is the message here? The message is that what it works on the screen while you're presenting, it will not work later uh, when it will be available for download and the other way around. Now let's start with the most common scenario. The most common scenario, um, which is used by loads of presenters, is to have visual aids slides that are full of text uh, for many reasons. 
Um, it's easy, you just copy and paste from somewhere. You use them as notes for your talk. And, and the other reason, of course, is that people say, you know, I, I leave the slides at the end of the presentation. And again, here we won't focus if you put them online, you put them on your website, you make them available for download, or you send them by email, um, or, or you print them and give them as a handout. You know, you, no matter what, they are all the same. I just categorize what you use on the screen live and what you give them later offline. So uh, you give them offline, of course, when you give to them offline or online, you, you are not there. So in a way, the slides, they are not really slides. They are more like a document. And some people, I believe, I'm not sure if it's Guy Reynolds or... Um, or who else could, could have been the coin, the word slidements, where slidements really stand for slides that are documents that can, you know, stand alone. Maybe it was Nancy Duarte. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. The point here is that those are not slides, as in f for screen during the live presentations, those are slidements. And slidements are different than slides. Because slidements, they have to leave alone. They should be able to convey a message without anyone on the side talking. Which is not what's happening when you're live on the presentation. Uh, because if your visual aids, your slides are slidements, they're able to you know, sustain the message without you, <laughs> then the question is, why are you there presenting? You know, there, there would be no reason, no added value for you as a speaker. What is really happening in, in this scenario, which as I said is the most common, slides with lots of text, slidements that can you know, stand alone, uh, what is really happening is that they act as a distraction for the audience, first of all. Because the audience will read the slide and will not pay attention to you. And this is the first problem. The second problem is that you read them, you, you, you end up reading them. You know, if you put up a slide with loads of text, you have really two options, or you ignore it completely. And then of course this brings up the question, you know, why uh, projecting on the screen something that you simply ignore? Or if you don't ignore, then you are forced into reading them. And again, you read them, uh, since you read them, but you need to read them out loud, but when we talk, we are slower compared to what we can read with our eyes. What's happening is that the audience read them faster than you. So they're not even in sync with you. So by the time that they are at the end of the slide, you're still reading in the middle. It just doesn't work. And in my courses, in my seminar, I also show some scientific proof about this. From um, There is several scientific proof. One of the most... A uh, famous one is a research by Professor John Swaller that you can look it up on Google and, and find um, everything about the research. And there was a very common article, I believe on the Washington Post, but I'm not sure about where it was published, um, titled PowerPoint is Dead, based on this research. And the idea was that slides, you know, they don't work when somebody is talking, which is completely not true, because I said that you cannot write a presentation deck which is effective both for live presenting on the screen and later on but i haven't said that there is no way of doing two different sets one that will work on screen and one that will work on uh, on say on paper printed or online or whatever it is so the, the real answer is no there is no way to do it but what you should do is to create two slide sets. One is for offline, and this should be slidements, not slide. You know, they should be able to convey the message without you supporting it with your talk. And this is quite easy also to test. You send it to someone and, and you know, and you ask them if they make sense, if there's something unclear, then you can go back and enrich your file. When you're ready, you can publish it. Now, if you want to use the same set on screen, as I said, it won't work. What you can do is get the set and for each 
a slide, picture what is really the concept you want to talk about, what is the, the core message, and then find the best graphical way of representing, uh, of, of showing that concept. It could be an image, or if you just run out of idea or you don't have the time to, to do something too fancy, you can even use something which is called the Takahashi method. You just isolate the, the word that expresses the concept and you just put it big on the screen. You know, it could be budget, it could be communication, it could be friendship, it could be trees, whatever. You just put that one and then with your talk, you enrich that visual aids and, and you paint the picture around what you're showing on the screen. And this is the fastest way of really of addressing these issues. But I'm sorry, no, there's no way to design a single set that will work in both occasions. The question number two that I picked up, and I haven't seen any question coming up. I've seen some, I'm, I'm seeing there are some viewers watching. Hi to everyone, uh, hi to jo who join later. If you want to ask your questions, please feel free to do it on, on public speaking. I'll just type it you know, in the chat message box, line box on Periscope, it will pop up on my screen. And if I pick it up and I'm able to answer, I'll be happy to do it. A second question that I got from my survey was, um, can we have alternatives to PowerPoints? Because all the presentation, they are so boring, so similar, all uh, slide events. Well, there are, of course, alternatives, um, although this, quest, this question and this answer is slightly related to the one before, because if they are all look the same, because they are made all the same with lots of text, boring, and so on, um, the problem is not PowerPoint, it's how you use it. So, first of all, if you go back and you make them visual, with graphics, with big images, you know, even if you use PowerPoint, they won't be boring at all. But to answer the questions, yes, there are alternatives. You can use Prezi. Uh, Prezi is a good alternative because it works um, in a different way. You have like a canvas where you can put your information and then with some um, cinema effects, you can move around in the information. You can zoom in, zoom out. It, it creates quite a show, but we are there not to make fashion. We are there to give a message to the audience. Um, so that's what we should care about in designing visual aids that support our message, not that you know we got the wow uh, factor. But the good thing about Prezi, what I like, is that it forces you to approach the visual aids in a different way than PowerPoint. It's quite difficult to copy and paste lots of text in Prezi. And therefore you start to think in a different way of creating a graphical representation of your concepts. So the tool is fine, and what I really like is the it gives you a different framework that pushes you to think and design visual aids in a different way. So Prezi is a good option, um, but of course there are others. Uh, there's like Cloud and few others, which what they do, they offer you the interaction with the audience where they, maybe they can vote on a slide, they can comment. But I would do some tests with those ones because you need to be able to handle them, to handle them during the presentation, which could be not that easy for everyone. And the second thing, I'm not sure all the audiences are ready to do that. Because what's happening is that at the beginning of the presentation, you probably have to tell them or to go to a certain URL, a web page, or they have to download an app. Uh, some people will not work, some people won't have the Wi-Fi, they don't have the code. So you run into the risk of losing time or creating struggles with the audience uh, in the beginning of the presentation with this interactive uh, software for presentation. But you don't need to use strictly a software on a computer. You can use PowerPoint, Impress, Keynote, whatever, Prezi, as I said, but you can use the flip chart in some cases. You can use props, prompts, you can use visual things. And if you want to pick up some ideas, please go on the internet and search for 
Hans Roslig presentations. Mainly the one at TED, they are great. And you will see how you can use um, a washing machine, an IKEA box, um, or other stuff just to create visual aids which are original, which will be um, creating a wow factor, but not in just uh, making something which is a special effort for the public, but something that will stick uh, and create emotions in the public and therefore will reinforce your message because it's coherent and at the same time with the um, emotional impact connected to the visual aids, you make sure that people will remember what you've done and consequently will remember your message, which is really your objective of the presentation. Now, I don't know if you have uh, time for a, a further question. Let's see what is the time here. Uh, yes, I believe we can have a, a final question. Let's see uh, what I got is every time I prepare a presentation, I always ask myself, who is the audience? And I try to see it from their point of view. Is there any special check I should do to make sure that I'm doing it right? A good question. Well, first of all, um, I should compliment who, who wrote this question because she or, or he is already doing a great thing, which is during the preparation, thinking who is the audience and designing the presentation according to is the audience. But the question goes uh, one step further. How can I make sure that I've done it correctly? The best way, the best answer I can offer you is, is try to have, to bring in uh, an audience, a test audience, which is as close as the one you're going to present to and see if it works with them. Um, I, just to give an example, let's suppose you are in sales in a corporation, okay? But it could be anything else. You, you can re relate this example to your environment. But you are in sales in a corporation and you need to deliver a big presentation, an important presentation to the finance department of a customer of yours. How can you check if the benefits, whatever you're telling them, your message will resonate with them? Well, one of the things you can try, you can ask somebody in finance in your company to sit through your presentation before and see how they react. Now, of course, they are not exactly like your customers because they are colleagues. So probably they know more about you, your product, your solution, whatever, more than the customer. Or, or maybe they don't have the same struggles as the customers. But they are from finance, so maybe they can understand some of the concept of finance. Well, surely they do understand, and they probably speak a similar language to one of your customer. So you can try to deliver the presentation to them, and of course you can just you know walk them through the presentations very quickly. If you want to have a real test, you should make them attend the full presentation, and then ask them how they perceive it, if everything made sense, if everything was logical, if they had questions, what was clear, what wasn't, what lasted on them, what made an impression and what didn't. And again, as I said, this is an example, but you can try to replicate it in, in your own environment. Basically, you need to find a test audience. It could be friends, it could be colleagues, um, it could be anyone who is as close, as similar to the final one. That would be the only real check and test you can do. So that's it. Uh, we covered around 20 minutes from three questions. Uh, so right now I just would like to thank you, anyone to thank you, the viewers, which are still on um, online um, with me. If you want to know more about public speaking or when I do the next Periscope, um, of course you have several options. You can check my website, which is www.paolopelloni.com or you can follow me on Periscope or Twitter. My, this is of course is my account, Paolo Pelloni, or you can even go on YouTube and look for my channel, uh, again, which is YouTube slash, in this case it's Pelloni Paolo, it's the other way around. 
B-E-L-L-O-N-I, P-A-O-L-O, where you can see videos about public speaking, and if I can, I will try also to upload some of the old periscopes once they, they're not online anymore. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want me, I'm going coming to come back with other periscopes on public speaking and specifically on answering questions on public speaking. So if you have your questions and you missed the chance today to ask me your question, uh, feel free to post it in the comment, to send me an email, to go on the blog on my website, wherever, to get in touch with me and put through your question. If I can, I will be happy to feature it in the next show and to answer it. All the best. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye now.